Hello, Julie here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share with you three cards I've made using gold and white. I'm using 240 GSM white cardstock and 250 GSM pearlized gold cardstock. I'm going to start with this card. It's five and a quarter inches square. To create the card base, I cut a piece of cardstock ten and a half inches by five and a quarter inches and then scored and folded it at five and a quarter inches on the ten and a half inch edge. This is the gold pearlized card I'm going to use. So I cut a piece that's five inches square and this will be the first layer on my card front. The next layer is a piece of white cardstock that I've cut four and three quarter inches square. I have an off cut of white cardstock that is five inches by one, one and one eighth inches. So I'm going to cut a piece of the gold cardstock that's five inches by one and three eighth inches to mat behind that. I'm going to use a black ink cube to ink the edges of all of those pieces of cardstock. I used double sided tape to attach my layers on top of each other so I attached the white um, four and three quarter inch piece on top of the gold five inch piece and the white strip on top of the gold strip. I've got a piece of gold organza ribbon from my stash and I'm going to wrap that around that strip and tie a knot. I'm not very good at bows so generally I'll tie a double knot and just cut the edges off so that they look pretty. I use a little dab of art glitter glue to hold that ribbon in place on the back and then I go ahead and attach some scrap chipboard to the whole strip. This panel is then attached to the front of the card. I use this hello die to cut my greeting. It cuts a the greeting and also a shadow. I've cut the shadow in gold and the greeting in white and I've inked around the edges of it. Now I'm using my glue to layer the white one on top of the gold. So when I decide to attach this to the card, I have a change of heart. I want to add some extra dimension to the card, so the piece that is behind that long panel, I want to emboss that. So I'm going to pull that strip panel off and um, cut a new piece of cardstock to go in there to replace that four and three quarters by four and three quarters piece of cardstock. Luckily enough, it came off without doing too much damage to the um, gold and white card base. So once I'd cut my new piece of cardstock, I took it to my big shot and ran it through with this um, embossing folder that embosses roses. I don't know the brand of this embossing folder. I think it could be Spellbinders, but I'm not sure. It's got no brand on it. Anyway, I and hit him, oh sorry, I embossed it through my big shot and then reattached all of my layers as I had previously. Now that I had that added interest on the front of the card, I went ahead and attached my greeting. To embellish my card, I've got a white flower from my stash and I've also got this uniquely creative die called, uh, what's it called? little leaves and um, I've cut the leaves out of some of the gold cardstock and I'm going to attach those to the front just sort of under the greeting and under the bow, the ribbon. I used a half inch um, punch to punch a little circle to go into the centre of the flower using that same gold cardstock. I used this bow die to create a tiny little gold bow to go into the centre of the flower. I can't remember what brand this is but I'll see if I can find the, a similar die and link it in the description box below if you're interested in getting a little die for bows because it's very handy. To finish this card up I used my Glimmer Mist in gold to make some splatters on the background. I mixed my Glimmer Mist with a bit of Artiste gold spritzing ink. So here we go with card number two which is actually a shaker card. My plan is to use this um, Hero Arts 
Flower Garden Fancy die as the front of my shaker. So I'm cutting my card base to fit that size or to suit that size. So my card size is actually six and a quarter inches by five inches. So I'm cutting a piece six and a quarter inches by ten. I'm going to score that at five and fold it in halves. To create my shaker element, I'm going to cut two pieces of the same cardstock and both of these will be five and three quarter inches by four and a half. I'm going to have a layer of the gold pearlised card between the card base and the shaker element. So I'm cutting a piece that's six inches by four and three quarter inches. All of these measurements will be on my blog if you wanted to check that out. I'll put a link in the description box below. Now I'm going to take one of those five and three quarter by four and a half inch pieces of white cardstock I cut and my uh, Hero Arts Flower Garden Fancy die and hold the die in place with a little bit of mint tape and then run it through my big shop. So that's going to give me my die cut piece and then my frame that the piece comes out of. I'm going to take my scissors and just trim some of that frame back so that it's not poking out as much into my um, picture and uh, I will be able to see more of the glitter articles that I've put in my shaker. I do want to keep the um, edges, the rough edges where the die cut actually cut out because I'm going to sort of inlay that top piece back into this base piece. I'm going to take a piece of transparency now and cut that down to five and three quarters by four and a half, the same as my panel I've just die cut. I'm now going to use my art glitter glue to attach that to the back side of the frame that I've just done the die cutting from. I applied the glue to the cardstock and then sort of rubbed it in a bit with my finger so that it wouldn't ooze out onto the acetate when I stuck it on top. I'm now going to apply my die cut piece to the top of the transparency so it's actually going to be sitting on top of the um, acetate. Because I don't want the glue to squish out onto the acetate, I am squeezing a bit onto a paper using a sponge to dab that all over my die cut so that I haven't got um, glue oozing. When I attach the die cut piece into the frame, I have to make sure that I get it nicely into the cut out sections of the frame so that it sits nicely. Once I've got it in place, I run my brayer over it to make sure I've got it sitting nice and flat against the acetate. Using my Redline Express It High Tack foam tape, I'm going to make a frame around the outside of the um, die cut section, making sure that you cannot see any of the foam um, poking out into those clear sections. To do that I have to cut my foam tape in half. So it's going to end up to be about a quarter of an inch wide. When you're doing this make sure you've got a complete closed square or rectangle because if you don't um, whatever you put in here will leak out. Now I'm using my anti-static bag over the top of the acetate because I find that that helps with the glitter or the whatever you're using in there, it stops it actually clinging to the acetate. Now I'm going to put my glitter in there. I'm using some chunky glitter, gold, and I'm going to tip it into the well, and about as much as I think this is always a bit of a guessing game for me. And then I'm going to remove the release um, paper from the back of the double-sided foam tape, and then attach that second piece of five and three quarter by four and a half inch white cardstock on top of it. Even though I'm using the high tack tape, I still run a bead of glue around on top of that tape for two reasons. I want to make sure it's stuck perfectly well and there's no leakage. And the second one is that the bit of glue on top of the foam gives me the opportunity to move my piece of cardstock that I'm putting on top of it around a little so that I can get it perfectly located. And there we have our 
little shaker element for the front of our card. Time now to start assembling the front of the card. I'm going to use my black ink cube and ink around the edge of the shaker panel and the gold cardstock and then use double sided tape to attach these to the front of the card base. So we could have left the card like that but I decided to add um, an embellishment to the front of the card as well. So I'm using a woodware stamp called Mini Garden Spray. It's just one flower. I'm going to use my uh, Versamark ink and my gold, em no sorry, white embossing powder to um, stamp this twice and emboss it twice um, on well, I did some on the white and two on white and two on gold because I wasn't quite sure which ones I wanted to use on the front of the card. So the gold ones I heat embossed with white and the white ones I heat embossed with gold. And once I had done that, I took my scissors and fussy cut them. To give my flowers some shape, I used a stubby holder or an old stubby holder that I've cut open so it sits flat and my flower shaping ball tools, I'm not sure what you call them, but that's what I call them, a flower shaping tool. And um, I worked on each of those flowers to give them some shape. I wanted to layer them up. They weren't going to ever be separate. So I shaped the petals on both of the flowers and then layered one on top of the other so that the petals were slightly offset so I end up with one gold flower and one white flower. I also add some tiny foam squares under each of those petals so that they won't get squashed down whether you put it in the mail or whatever you do they'll, they'll keep their height and dimension. I'm going to use the uniquely creative little leaves die once again to cut some leaves to go with this flower. I decided to go with the gold flower and I'm going to cut the leaves out of gold as well. Once I'm happy with the position of the flower and the leaves, I use my liquid glue to hold them in place. The sentiment for this card comes from the Woodware stamp collection called Word Fragments. I'm going to stamp and heat emboss um, It's Your Day in gold embossing powder onto some white cardstock. The sentiment includes a frame around it, so once I've um, finished my heat embossing, I use my scissors and cut that out. I stamped and embossed three of these greetings because um, it saves me having to go through the whole process again if I make a mistake and accidentally bump it or something like that. And if I do manage to make all three fine, well then I've got a couple in reserve for another card. I attached the greeting to the card front. I put a little foam square on one end so that when it sat over the top of the flower, the foam square would keep it nice and level. So there we have our second card, a shaker card. I'm always a bit partial to shaker cards and this one looks very pretty. Now this next card is probably the simplest card of all three but it probably took me the longest time to make because I made that flower that's on the front. To make that flower um, you need to have the um, Tim Holtz Tattered Florals um, Bigs die and you cut three of the very thin spindly looking flower and two of the largest flower. I'm doing my flowers in white because I'm going to use a gold background. Um, I'm not going to sort of give a tutorial on how to make this flower because this video is getting very, very long. But if you would like to know how to make the flower, please leave me a comment and I'll do a how-to tutorial on making the flower. I saw this flower on YouTube about 10 years ago. And I, quite often I make it. It's such a very pretty flower. And um, when I'm looking for a nice focal point for something, um, this is the floral that I will generally go to. Anyway, um, I'm going to sort of fast forward through this um, 
and you will see me do it but there won't be any instruction on how to do it as I said if you want to know how to do it I'm more than happy to do a how-to video on creating this glasses it is so pretty so now to create the actual card base uh, once again I'm using smooth white cardstock it's 240 GSM I'm cutting it to five and a quarter inches by ten and a half scoring at five and a quarter inches on the ten and a half inch edge to make a five and a quarter inch square card. I also cut a piece of the gold pearlized card five inches square that will be the top layer of my card front. I ran the gold cardstock through my big shot with this Couture Creations washed away embossing folder. It just puts a whole heap of bows on the paper. I ink the edge of that and attach it to the card front. I'm going to use my liquid glue to attach this very pretty lace down the um, left hand edge of my card front. I got this lace from Craft Supplies for You. I will link as many products as I can in the description box below if you're interested in getting hold of any of these items. To create my sentiment for this card I'm going to use this Kazaz Hello stamp. It's a stamp and die set. I use my Versamark ink to stamp the greeting then I heat embossed it with some gold embossing powder and used the die to cut it out. I held the die in place using some of that mint tape. I used art glitter glue to attach both the greeting and the flower to the card front. I added a bow that I made with this die, so I made quite a few of them as you can see there. Um, this one is the largest size and it's from the gold cardstock. I tried a white one but the gold was um, better in my opinion so I went with the gold. I'm just attaching it using a bit of glue and I'm going to stick it on top of the lace and slightly tucked under the flower. So there are my three cards for today um, you'll find all the links below and don't forget if you'd like to see the tutorial on how to create that white flower just leave me a comment below and I'd be more than happy to create a tutorial for anybody that wants to know. So thank you for watching my video today and I hope you can join me for my next video.